we're diving headfirst into another epic week, and I've got just the electrifying announcements to fuel your excitement for the week of February 4th, 2024. Let's shower our February babies with love and cheer. Happy birthday to all of our incredible February celebrants from your Fairfield family. May your special day be filled with joy, blessings, and unforgettable moments. And to all the couples marking their anniversary this month, here's to love, laughter, and countless cherished memories. Your Fairfield family celebrates your journey together and wishes you continued happiness and love as you navigate life's beautiful adventures. We are in the process of sending emails to our members to help you set up your account on our new giving and church management platform, Subsplash. If you haven't already, please take a moment to create your account, allowing you to log in and explore the platform's beautiful features. Join the Kingdom Men every Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. in the administration building for the gathering, an evening of prayer, Bible study, and fellowship. Our next-gen youth experience will take place on Sunday, February 11th, 9.30 a.m. in the Michael Benson Family Life Center for youth potty trained to high school seniors. Registration is available on the church's website or in the app in the Next Gen tab. Fairfield family, let's all join Pastor Vickers on Wednesday, February 14th, 7 o'clock p.m. at Pleasant Grove Baptist Church in Marietta, Georgia, where Dr. Sammy Dow serves as pastor for their Ash Wednesday service. Limited transportation is provided from Fairfield. Reserve your seat by visiting the events page on our website or app. Seats are limited. Mark your calendars for the DeKalb County Health Fair on Saturday, February 24th. 10 o'clock a.m. Join us for a day of wellness and valuable health information you don't want to miss. It. Pastor Vickers, second pastoral anniversary will take place on Sunday, February 25th, 9.30 a.m. We will welcome guest preacher, Dr. Kevin W. Cosby, senior pastor of St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky, and musical guest, Zebulon Ellis. Join us in your blue and gold as we celebrate and keep pushing. The Wings Ministry wishes to thank all the ladies of Fairfield who joined us on Saturday, January 27th, for the Sisterhood Sneaker Soiree. Stay tuned for the next Wings event. The Fairfield family received a thank you card from Fonda and Paul Spencer acknowledging all acts of kindness shown during the passing of their father. Hey, come on and visit our Yoke Bookstore on Saturdays from 10 o'clock a.m. to 11.30 a.m. and on Sundays before and after service. Discover a treasure trove of fairwear, Bibles, and other enriching our bookstore is available for you. Stop by and explore the inspiring collection curated just for you. You can still help us in making the big push. Make your sacrificial contribution towards our big push campaign. We're asking members and friends of Fairfield to commit $1,000 above their tithes and offerings for the year towards making a substantial payment towards eliminating our mortgage. Visit the giving page on our website or in the app to give towards our big push. If you've already made your contribution towards our big push and did not receive your wristband, please stop by the Yoke Bookstore. Join us for our in-person Bible study every Wednesday at 12 o'clock p.m. Can't make it? No worries. Catch the session airing at 7 o'clock p.m. across all of our streaming platforms. Let's dive deeper into the Word together as we continue walking through Revelation. Fair Care is here to meet your spiritual and physical needs. Fair Care is a one-stop shop for congregational care. If you are in need of assistance, please visit our website and click on Fair Care. Our services and supporting ministries are ready and willing to assist you. Sunday school takes place on Sundays at 8 o'clock a.m. in the Zach Brown Administrative and Educational Center, as well as on Zoom. Please visit the Christian Education page on our website to connect with the online sessions. Experience the power of convenience by downloading the Fairfield app from the app or Google Play Store. Stay in the loop with our Lighthouse Weekly and other church communications delivered right to your inbox. For a wealth of information, check out our website app or social media platforms 
Explore easy options to give your tithes an offering in person, electronically, or by mail. Don't miss out on any of our upcoming events, vital information, announcements, exclusive updates. Keep those notifications on for the app. Let's stay united, informed, and empowered as we keep pushing forward. This is your girl, Joy Benton, and I hope you have a What joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arm. Good morning, Fairfield. Our scripture today will be coming from Psalms 100. Psalms 100. Would you please stand for the reading of the Lord's words? Starting at verse 1. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. And into his gates with thanksgiving, and unto his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy everlasting, and his truth endures through all generation. Blessed be the reading of the Lord's word, and especially to the doers. Amen. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust.
And we want to say thank you, Lord. Now, Father, we ask that you send your spirit down. Let it fall fresh on the choir. Let it fall fresh on the musician. You are welcome in this place, Holy Spirit. And we just thank you, Father. Have mercy on us right now for Jesus' sake. Hold us, keep us in your care, Father. In the name of Jesus. Bless like only you can, Lord God. Bless our pastor, Reverend F. John Dickens. Bless his family, Lord. Bless Pastor Mary Benton. Bless his family in the name of Jesus. Lord, we need you in this dark and dimmest world, Father. There's so much going on, Father, we that need to you to lean on. Knowing that we look to the right, there's death. We look to the left, that right, there's prime. Father, we ask that you give us protection everywhere we go. Even when we come to this place, a sacred place that we come to worship. We come to worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. And we thank you, Father. We think that place of worship, where you created us to worship you. You inhabit the praise of your people. We just thank and praise and worship you today. Because you're worthy to be praised. And we're worthy to be glorified. We want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This is your servant prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to treat everybody right. Amen. Amen. Well, this is February, which is our Black History Month. Come on, y'all. Let's give God a hand praise. So in lieu of that, we decided to go back a little bit. And going back, we decided to get our oldest deacon to come and help us sing this morning. Come on, y'all. Give him a praise. He's our dean of deacons. So we're going to go back with an old song. Y'all just go with us, okay? All right, go with us. We're going back a ways. And mama may come up in there, okay? As I let my mind run back, I can see a little old church. Sitting by the railroad track Just a little shabby old play We used to sing amazing grace Talking about a good time long ago We used to have a good time We're going to say that again As I live Yeah. 
glory, glory, glory. Glory to his name this morning. Are you allowing your mind to run back? Are you allowing your mind to run back? To remember the goodness of Jesus Christ and your Lord. Welcome, Fairfield. Tell your neighbor, good morning. Good morning, good morning. We welcome you this morning to our service where the presence of the Lord is. And you have liberty in this place. We serve awesome God. We serve a great God. And he always takes care of us. So when our mind run back, we always remember his promises are yes and amen. Yes. Amen, 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 yes. amen, amen. If you are a first time worshiper with us, just wave your hand at us. And if you're online worshiping with us for the first time, wave in the chat. We love to know our first-time worshipers. And if you are someone that's just returning for a second time, we welcome you as well. So Fairfield, at this time, pull out your mobile devices and take a selfie with someone. It's okay to take a selfie with someone that you don't normally take a selfie with because they're going to be uploaded when you send them in. And we'll be able to view it and, and, and talk about it and share it with others. So take that time with that selfie. We build our community of faith that way. Amen. Amen, amen. This time, Fairfield, let us stand and let us officially welcome everyone to Fairfield Baptist Church. We have a special song for you. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, people. Oh, gospel. Oh, world.
no words left, just say, oh, oh, oh. Would you join me in thanking God for our 10 candidates today? We can do a little better than that. Would you celebrate with us our 10 candidates? We praise God for you and how excited we are about the decision that you have made to live for Jesus Christ. I'm going to call your name, and when I do, I want to invite you to come and stand as you receive your certificate. Brother Eric R. Tiller. There he is. Certificate of baptism. This certifies that Eric R. Tiller was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit on the fourth day of February 2024. Fairfield Baptist Church, Eric George Vickers. Pastor, congratulations, my brother. God bless you. Brother Robert D. Rogers. This certifies that Robert D. Rogers was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit on the fourth day of February 2024, Fairfield Baptist Church, Eric George Vickers, Pastor. Congratulations. Brother Marcus Clausen. This is a phenomenal young man right here. I'm proud of him. This certifies that Marcus Clausen was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit on the fourth day of February 2024. Fairfield Baptist Church, Eric George Vickers, Pastor. Congratulations. <laughs> Shay Clausen, this certifies that Shea Clausen, this is mama and son right here, was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit on the fourth day of February, 2024, Fairfield Baptist Church, Eric George Vickers. Pastor, congratulations. Sean McGrady, Jr. This certifies that Sean McGrady, Jr. was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit on the fourth day of February, 2024, Fairfield Baptist Church, Eric George Vickers, Pastor. Congratulations. <laughs> Melissa Brown. <laughs> this certifies that Melissa Brown was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit on the fourth day of February, 2024, Fairfield Baptist Church, Eric George Vickers, Pastor. <laughs> Chloe Brown. Come on. This certifies that Chloe Brown was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit on the fourth day of February, 2024. Fairfield Baptist Church, Eric George Vickers, Pastor. Congratulations, Chloe. Thank you. Isabella Brown. <laughs> this certifies that Isabella Brown was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit on the fourth day of February, 2024, Fairfield Baptist Church, Eric George Vickers. Pastor, congratulations. Jace Friend. Come on, Jace. This certifies that Jace Friend was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit on the fourth day of February, 2024. Fairfield Baptist Church, Eric George Vickers, pastor. 
Well, all right. <laughs> and last but not least, Kiara Bassett. This certifies that Kiara Bassett was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit on the fourth day of February 2024, Amen. Fairfield Baptist Church, Eric George Vickers, Pastor, congratulations. Amen. Come on, can we say amen as we congratulate our candidates? <laughs> my, my, my. We praise God for these families that have made decisions together. In the name of the Lord be praise. Amen. Just a few brief pastoral observations. Uh, I want to invite you again uh, to join me Wednesday, February 14th at 7 p.m. at Pleasant Grove Baptist Church in Marietta, Georgia, where Dr. Sammy Dial serves as pastor for their Ash Wednesday service. Now, I realize what day that is, and so brothers, please don't get in trouble on my account, uh, but if you are able if you are able, Ash Wednesday falls on Valentine's Day, and I invite you to come out and share uh, with me as we share with the Pleasant Grove Baptist Church family uh, at 7 p.m. There are limited seats available on the bus, and if you desire church transportation, we invite you to visit our website to reserve your space at fairfieldbc.org. Amen? Amen. Also a reminder that Bible study has resumed. We are walking through Revelation, and I'm telling you, the Lord has been blessing us in a tremendous way. And so we invite you to come on out on Wednesdays at 12 noon right here in the Son's house and to join us on our journey as we walk through Revelation. Amen. And then finally, um, I want to make known news that we did not know this time last week which is a friend of this church and a friend of this pastor in the person of John Culberson Jr., 36 years old, would often frequent Fairfield, was here not too long ago, uh, was unexpectedly called home to be with the Lord last week, and his homegoing service will be 12 noon, Saturday, February 10th, at Calvary Hill Baptist Church in Stonecrest, I'm asking that you would remember the Culberson family in a very special way. Uh, John was a supporter of everything and everybody. And if he loved you, you knew it. And so I'm asking that we would remember that family in a very special way. He was always all over Lithonia and DeKalb County in church supporting someone's worship experience. And so uh, this is a loss for our community. Uh, but even in this, we know that God does all things well. And God makes no mistakes. And so, th again, that homegoing service will be February 10th, 12 noon, at Calvary Hill Baptist Church in Stonecrest. For all of the announcements, brothers and sisters, we invite you to kick the tires on our social media sites. Check the website, fairfieldbc.org, so that you may stay apprised of all of the happenings at Fairfield Baptist Church. Such a joy and delight to see all of our first-time worshipers today and to see all of our friends and supporters of our baptism candidates. It is our hope and our prayer that something is said today that will resonate with you and carry you throughout the balance of this week. But we're just so excited to have you in our company today. Amen. It's offering time in God's house. What a joy, what a privilege it is to be included in what God wants to do in his kingdom. It's a privilege to be counted upon by God, to be trusted by God, to participate in the life of his kingdom. Here at Fairfield, we believe in the word of God. The Bible tells us to bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that there may be meat or provision in my house. Prove me, test me, try me in this, says the Lord of hosts, that I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessing that you won't even have room enough to receive it. The Bible tells us that if we do this, that our barns will be filled with plenty and our presses will burst forth with new wine. It's a joy to give 
And so one dime out of every dollar belongs to the Lord. Really, everything that we have is his, isn't it? And yet God only asks that we return a portion of that, 10%, back into his care. And we know that when we give to God, we don't lose anything. God is in the business of giving. And when we give to God, God gives back to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Running over. Running over. Do you know what that means? That means when God blesses you, you can't even contain all that God wants to give you. Your, your arms are not big enough. Your coffers are not deep enough. When God blesses us, he blesses us above our wildest imagination. I love what one old preacher says when he talks about our cups running over. He said, God has been so good to us, we don't even touch the cup. We've been drinking out the saucer. Can anybody testify to that? When God blesses me, I, 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 my whole life, I've just been sipping out the saucer because his goodness has been running over. And so we rejoice today because of the kind of God we serve. And then we have challenged ourselves as a church family to give above and beyond our tithes and offering toward our 4321 mortgage elimination campaign. We've been striving to eliminate $4 million in three years to God's glory as one church. At the outset of this initiative, we were at $4.35 million. Do we have the updated number? We don't have the updated number. Well, this time last month, the number was $1.954 million. It's about to be lower than that. And if you don't believe that giants fall, maybe you haven't seen them fall in your life, but we're watching one teeter right now. And I believe, I believe, I believe that it is already done according to our faith. Can I borrow Abraham's question? Is there anything? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? And on the first Sunday of Black History Month, I've come to declare that there is absolutely, unequivocally nothing too hard for our God. And so we recite our stewardship confession that tells us what we give why we give and the blessings tied to our giving. I invite you to rest upon your feet as you are able as we recite this in concert. Ready, let's go. I am a cheerful giver and a bountiful sower. I am committed to giving my time, talent, and tithe. I believe that God is the source behind every resource. I believe that God will supply all of my needs and make all grace abound toward me. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. We believe you, and we count it as done in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now give according to how the Lord has prospered us.
we honor and reverence all of our leaders that are present and in their respective places. And we praise God for this distinguished branch of Zion called Fairfield. Our Pastor Emeritus and our First Lady Emerita, we acknowledge them and all of you. But I was just notified a few moments ago that the king is here. And it's cool that you came. It's cool that you got dressed today, that you came all the way here, but the king is here. And since we know that the king is here, I think that the king deserves a royal response. I said the king of glory deserves a royal response. The king who provides, the king who makes ways, the king who opens doors. Come on, with the lifting of your hands, with the opening of your mouths, just begin to bless the king of all creation. He's here. His presence is here. There's fullness of joy, pleasures evermore. And he's worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory The King of Glory shall praise God today. Grab your Bibles. Now when the presidential motorcade rides by, everything stops. Soldiers salute. When the judge walks in the courtroom, everybody stands up. Now what do you do when the King of Glory walks in? When, how do you respond when the King of Glory shows up? If you can salute the president, if you can stand for the judge, somebody in the son's house ought to have a praise on your lips and thanksgiving in your heart. The king of glory is here. Hallelujah. of the king. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them the king is here. Grab your Bible.
praise your name. Chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. was understood that it's the job of the king to provide for all the subjects in the land. So when people ate, it was because the king provided. When folks had clothes to wear, it was because the king provided. What I'm trying to help us to understand I'm trying to move, but what I'm trying to help us to understand is that everything you have, the king has provided. It wasn't your job, it wasn't your savings. The king has provided. We bless his name. Luke 19, verse 1. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, he has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house. Because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save 
the lost. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may claim your seats in the presence of the Lord. As we gather today, I invite you to think with me through a new series of messages entitled Jesus and Justice. Jesus and Justice. Nearly 139 years ago, right here on this land, four or five families gathered and formed a brush arbor. 20 years after the close of the Civil War and during the period of Reconstruction. This period in the history of our country was known as a time of great revitalization and strides for people of the African diaspora. Economic fortunes were changing, and so was the socio-political landscape for black people in this country. This is the period of time in which this church took her root. And as time would go on, we would discover that reconstruction became a precursor to deconstruction. For it was not long that Jim Crow began to rear his ugly head. Federally sanctioned segregation became the law of the land. Separate and unequal. I think it's important that we not forget that it was not that long ago where we were drinking from separate water fountains. I think it is too important for us to forget that it was not that long ago that we were riding in the back of buses. It was not that long ago that if you wanted to go to a restaurant that you would have to enter, not through the front door, but through the back, if you were served at all. We are a people well acquainted with the iron foot of injustice. And yet, there is something special deeply embedded in the pigmentation of our skin. Blood courses through the veins of resilience. We've never seen a mountain that we have not overcome. That's why Black History Month is important. We still live in a day and time where the workings of Jim Crow are still alive and well. And while Jim Crow may have died, his more polished grandson, James Crow III, <laughs> is very well versed in infiltrating the educational system in an attempt to attack critical race theory and try to rewrite the history of this nation so as to keep the truth from being known. And yet we gather as people of faith because our faith reminds us that the God we serve is a God who sides, in the words of James Cone, with the oppressed. Our faith remains strong because scripture shows us time and time again that God always has something to say about people who have been mistreated. And I want to offer a word early in this message to those who are tight right now 
and experience a great deal of reticence because it sounds as if Pastor Vickers is wading in the waters of politics. I want to help us to understand that in order to truly gain a picture, a true picture of who Jesus was and is, you cannot divorce Jesus from politics. If I can say it more pointedly, you cannot divorce Jesus from justice. As we come to the time of our text in Luke 19, Jesus' ministry has become wildly popular. All throughout the region, all throughout the area, his name has gained fame. And Jesus makes his way toward a known town called Jericho. Jericho, down through the years, has been known as a reprobate city. It has been known as a place that often repels the things of God. We have become acquainted with Jericho through our study of Scripture because we are reminded that it was in Jericho that the peasant migration of the Israelites infiltrated this area and through the cedar, through this illustrative retelling of the capture of Jericho, we are reminded that this makeshift band of soldiers, Israel, they march around the walls of Jericho and then on the final time they blow their trumpets and as we mostly have become well acquainted we know that the walls according to the text came tumbling down. We are familiar with Jericho. We are reminded that in the walls of Jericho there was a sister who made her living in sex work. She lived in the wall of Jericho and when two spies came to determine if the land was good, they, they hid under flax on the rooftop of her house and, and then she let out a scarlet cord to let them know what the deal was. A prostitute by the name of, of Rahab was in Jericho. We are well acquainted with Jericho. It was here in Jericho that a blind man cried out and because of his relentless crying out, he gained the attention of Jesus and he received his sight. Jericho was an unusual place, but it was unusual not for the reason that many people would believe, but it was unusual because God consistently looked at Jericho and identified it as a place that was profitable for miracle working. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I've come to let you know that we ought to rename this place Jericho. Because as I look around, I see miracle after miracle. As I look around the sanctuary and as I peer through the virtual stained glass window, I can see miracles all in the chat. Right here in Jericho, God reserves the right to do miraculous things. And maybe we ought to redefine how we categorize and qualify miracles. I would submit to you this morning that what we have in Luke 19 is a miracle of epic proportions. No, fish and barley loaves are not multiplied. No, physical blinded eyes are not open. No, none of that is happening. The dead have not been raised to life in Luke 19, but rather somebody who was far out has been brought all the way in. Somebody who was considered a lost cause has now been found. Somebody who has been considered a throwaway, a castaway, has been recycled and made brand new. And can I tell you, brothers and sisters, anytime God decides to look upon somebody and make their lives brand new, it is a miracle. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but if God has ever forgiven you, if God has ever wiped the slate clean, if God has ever erased some of the mistakes you made and given you another opportunity, I've come to suggest to you this morning, that's a miracle. If God has ever wiped your tears away, given you a new reputation, that is a miracle. 
I've come to suggest to us that we ought to redefine and recategorize how we qualify miracles. In fact, I want to be honest today, as I look across this sanctuary, I'm looking at a room full of miracles. You may not know it, you may not realize it, your life might seem ordinary, but if you woke up this morning, you're a miracle. If you had strength to pick up your fork and put it to your mouth, you're a miracle. If you had strength to put on your own clothes, you're a miracle. If you walked in here or rolled in here under your own power, you're a miracle. If you are living and blood is running warm in your vein and God has given you another chance, you are a miracle. Why don't you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you may not know this, but you're sitting beside a miracle. Look at somebody else and tell them, you may not believe it, but you're looking at God's greatest miracle. When you're looking at me, you're looking at somebody that God has made brand new. Is there anybody here who can just give God glory and praise for his miracle working power in your life? Amen. Amen. The problem with many of us in the church is that we like to come up with our own qualifications for who qualifies for a miracle. Well, I would like to present a case study for a miracle today in the person and personality of Zacchaeus. Scholars are kind enough to tell us that Zacchaeus' name by origin means pure and righteous. And yet, as we peruse the character of Zacchaeus, we find that there's nothing pure nor righteous about him. Is it not amazing that we can be called one thing and live totally antithetical to what we are called? Isn't it funny how Zacchaeus was called righteous, was called pure, but there was nothing righteous and pure about him? Now wait a minute, lest we become bullies to Zacchaeus. I want you to know that before you were righteous, you were called righteous. And before you were redeemed, you were called redeemed. This is Zacchaeus' story in full view. By profession, Zacchaeus is a chief tax collector. He is a small cog in the wide wheel of state, of state sanctioned oppression and injustice. He is employed by the Roman government. Zacchaeus, who is an Israelite himself, works for the government that occupies the region. He is viewed as a traitor. My uncle would say it like this. He's an Israelite, but he's not acting like an Israelite. Uncle would say it like this, all skin folk are not your kin folk. Zacchaeus is an Israelite, but he is employed by the oppressor. His job was to oversee all of the other tax collectors who would go around and claim that which belonged to Caesar, but the tax collectors were notorious for adding personal taxes on top of what they charged the people. What I'm trying to help you to understand, brothers and sisters, is that tax collectors would line their own pockets. They would fatten the tax illegally, but there was no check and balance for them because it was a bonus to be employed by the Roman government and it was a privilege to be able to line your own pockets. Can I say it like this? Nobody liked the tax collectors and nobody liked the chief tax collector. He was a state-sanctioned employed crook. He was a cheater, and he was a good one. 
He was so good, the Bible says that Zacchaeus was very rich. Zacchaeus made his wealth on the bent and broken backs of the poor and the oppressed. Zacchaeus had enough money to make a significant financial contribution to the Israelite Ivy League institution of his choice. Zacchaeus would have had a building named in his honor. Zacchaeus was rich. Zacchaeus could drive to the Buckhead section of Jericho and he could pick out whatever he wanted to and drive it off the lot with no miles on it. Zacchaeus was rich. Zacchaeus could go to Phipps Plaza and hand over his black card and swipe until his heart was content. Zacchaeus was very, very rich. Zacchaeus was so rich he didn't have to worry about the price of gas per gallon. Zacchaeus was so rich he didn't have to keep up with the cost of milk in the grocery store. Zacchaeus was so rich he no longer needed coupons or Groupon because he made his wealth off the backs of the poor. If Zacchaeus would have lived in this day and time, as I was growing up, his home would have been on MTV Cribs. They would have opened the door and he would have said, I'm Zacchaeus and this is how I'm living. He, he was rich. And yet, with all of his wealth, there was something that he could not buy. And I want to suggest to us that there's nothing wrong with having means. There's nothing wrong with being well off. But it does matter how you get to where you're going. Zacchaeus could could have whatever he wanted over the counter, but there was still something on the inside that caused him to be restless. How do you know that, Pastor Vickers? How, how can you say that without towing the line of being eisegetical? I'm so glad you said it. So glad you asked it. We can tell that in all of his wealth and in all of his opulence, there was something missing because Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was going to be in the area and he went in search of him. And might I suggest to us in this message, in the middle of this message, is that you can have all of the things that the world can offer you, but there are some things that only Jesus can satisfy. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care where you live or what you drive. There are some things that only Jesus can satisfy. You can buy the best Sealy Postropedic mattress. But only Jesus can give you peace of mind that allows your head to lay on the pillow. You can afford to go to any restaurant you want to, but it is only the peace that Jesus gives that can help you keep your food down. You can afford the best doctors in the land. Some of us have changed our noses and changed our breasts and augmented our backside. But there are some things that only Jesus can give you. A peace of mind that says, I, I know that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. Yeah. Zacchaeus is in search of something. When you have everything that the world can offer you, it will still leave you empty if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus was a short brother. And the crowd had gathered to see Jesus. But Zacchaeus couldn't see Jesus. I wonder, I really wonder what it was that kept Zacchaeus from seeing Jesus. Was, was it really the fact that his stature was so short and people were in the way? 
Or was it his own short-sightedness for the things of the world that prevented him from seeing Jesus? Well, anyway, he climbs into a sycamore tree. He climbs into a sycamore tree because he knew that, that, that Jesus was going to pass that way. And here's what's interesting to me. Zacchaeus climbs into the sycamore tree so that he could see Jesus. Or so he thought. But the text shows us that when Zacchaeus climbs into the sycamore tree, it is not Zacchaeus that calls out to Jesus. But it is Jesus that calls out to Zacchaeus. I, 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 don't, know, I don't know who you are, but I just come to let you know this morning he sees you. He, he, he sees you where you are. He sees you as you are. And, and, and he calls out to Zacchaeus. He says, Zacchaeus, come down. Come, come, come down from the tree. Zacchaeus, come down from the tree because I'm going to your house today. Je Jesus, Jesus utilizes the rationale of, of ML King Jr. when he talked about the fierce urgency of now. He, said, he says, come down, Zacchaeus, because I'm, I'm going to your house today. I'm going to your house now. And, and Luke shows us the immediacy with which Jesus moved throughout his ministry. His, his ministry began like that as a little boy when, when he was lost. And his parents could not find him. And when they finally catch up to him, Jesus says, didn't you know that I would be here today? Didn't you know that I would be about my father's business? You didn't know that you would find me here today? Everything about Jesus' ministry, as told by the third evangelist Luke, shows us the immediacy with which Jesus moved in his ministry. There, there are some things that Jesus wants to do and needs to do right now. He says, we're going to your house today. And so Zacchaeus comes down and he hurries down, the text says. And they go to Zacchaeus' house. And the folks who are churchy. It's always the churchy folk who are critical. Isn't it? They start hitting each other and they say, look. Look at this. He's going to eat with a sinner. This is important, sisters and brothers, because mealtime was a very important time. It was, it was a sacred time. You didn't just eat. You didn't just dine with anybody. It was a sacred experience. They said, look, he, he's getting ready to, to have a sacred experience with a sinner, with a known sinner. See, it's one thing to be the kind of sinner where all your stuff is in the closet and you can pretend like you're saved and righteous and sanctimonious. Right, you can put on the, the custom suit, you can put on the St. John knit, you can, you can have your hair fried, dyed, and laid to the side. You, you can look a certain way, but it's an entirely different experience. When everybody knows your business, when everybody knows what you used to do and, and how you used to do it. And it's always the folk who used to do it with you. I'm not testifying. I'm telling you what I heard. They said, look at him. He's getting ready to eat with a sinner. He's not worthy of being in the presence of Jesus. And woe unto us when we try to determine who is worthy being invited to the table. Your issue may not be known, but can I let you in on a secret? 
you got some issues. And your issue may not be your neighbor's issue. Don't look at them, look at me. And your issue might not be my issue, but I'm so grateful that Luke 19 shows us that Jesus is willing to dine with the sinner. I thank God that my name is Zacchaeus. I thank God that when the Lord looks at me, he doesn't throw me away and push me to the side even though I'm not worthy of his grace. I'm not worthy of his goodness. I thank God that the Lord wants to come into my house. Zacchaeus hears this. He, he hears what the folks are saying. I love that Zacchaeus never responds to the naysayers. Can I be honest with you this morning? The Lord is still working with me on that. If you follow me on social media, you know that my clapback ministry is strong. And if you're watching this message, don't take that as a license to try me. He's still working on me. But Zacchaeus does not pull an Eric George Vickers Sr. Zacchaeus turns his attention to Jesus. And here's what Zacchaeus says. Zacchaeus says, Lord, I have done wrong. They're not lying on me. I've made my name mud, which is why they can drag it through it. I, I, I've made some mistakes. Yes, yes, I've been a thief. Yes, I've been a liar. Yes, I've gotten rich off cheating folks out of their money. But here's where I am. I will give away half of the stuff that I own. And Lord, if that is not enough, I'm willing to repay anybody that I've done wrong four times that which I've messed them over. Look at what Zacchaeus is saying. Zacchaeus is helping us to indicate that he understands Jewish law. According to Jewish law, the strictest punishment of restitution was to repay four times the offense. Zacchaeus says, I am willing to go all of the way and to take the worst punishment because of my sin. And Jesus turns to Zacchaeus and said, because of what you said, salvation has come into your house. And can I suggest, brothers and sisters, that many times we shout off the fact that salvation has come and we should shout about salvation, but we jump over the justice that's in the text. Can I help you? And if you really want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, if you really want to be a follower of Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, you and I have to be concerned about justice. Why am I talking about justice? At the outset of this message, I shared with you that this church started as a brush arbor in 1885, 20 years after the close of the Civil War, during the period of Reconstruction. And today, we still sit on the same land wherein we were founded. And sitting like David before the Goliath of Stone Mountain, we are reminded of the subversive tactics of racism that still reverberate to this day. What I'm trying to suggest to you is that even though we are far removed, nearly 140 years removed from the founding of this church we still face atrocities as a result of slavery we're still in chains but the chains look different if one grocery store in this area closes we'll be chained to a food desert if we don't do something about education in this community the gap will continue to widen and we'll be short-sighted when it comes to the area of science, technology, and math, engineering, and math. If we don't do something now, we're going to be in the midst of another housing crisis. We, we have to be concerned about housing for people from the cradle all the way to the rocking chair. If we don't do something right now, we're going to be in, the, in a financial crisis in our own community. Because the vestiges of slavery still reverberate to this day. It was not that long ago. 
The Ku Klux Klan was riding down Redan Road on their way to Stone Mountain. I'm trying to help you to understand you can't shout about Jesus and be silent about justice. And this is a word not just to us individually, but to the most powerful government in the world today. That you cannot claim to be a Judeo-Christian nation and turn a blind eye and a deaf ear to the suffering of the same people that Jesus is concerned about. The state of Georgia and the United States could take a lesson from Zacchaeus. I'm talking about not just theological but financial reparations. It's Black History Month, so you got to excuse me, but that's what got Dr. King killed. It was not his I have a dream speech, but it was his call for a wide redistribution of wealth so that we could eliminate poverty. Zacchaeus says, if I've wronged anybody, I will repay them four times what they lost. And it is in the process of trying to bring justice to those that he has wronged that Zacchaeus finds salvation. What am I saying to us brothers and sisters? Well, on an individual level, you can't be saved if you mistreat folk. Because, because justice is love in the public square. That, that's that's what justice is. You want to talk about how God is love? Well, love is what it does. Zacchaeus says, I'll repay four times what I lost. Jesus says, today salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. But the son of man came to seek out and to save those who are lost. Jesus was speaking with Zacchaeus in mind, but he was speaking to all of the haters and naysayers who profess to be righteous. For Jesus in one pericope said, those who are well don't need a doctor, but I've come for those that are sick. Jesus says in the presence of Zacchaeus to all of those who criticize Jesus's dining partner, that he did not come for those who were found, but he came for those who were lost. We, we heard that just four chapters earlier in Luke 15, as Jesus told three parables about the lost coin and the lost sheep and the lost son. Jesus was trying to help his disciples and all listeners understand that he has come for those that are lost. I'm so glad that there was something in Zacchaeus that made him seek out Jesus. Because just as Jesus' ministry was known, so was Zacchaeus' deeds. But Pastor Mattis, I got excited as I studied this particular pericope. Because this encounter happened while Zacchaeus was in a tree. Zacchaeus climbed up in a tree. But Zacchaeus didn't belong in a tree. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, you come down. Well, you lifted a little higher than what you can handle. Being up in a tree is not something you can handle. Why don't you come on down so salvation can come into your house? Let, let, let me handle being on a tree. That's why I'm so grateful to talk about Jesus and justice. Jesus had justice in mind when he climbed up on a tree. Jesus had justice in mind when he thought about you and me as he was suspended from the sixth to the ninth hour. Jesus had justice in mind. Justice demanded that you and I should die. But grace and mercy said, oh no, oh no, we've already paid the price. I'm so glad that Jesus had justice 
in mind. Is there anybody here who can just slip a hand in the air and thank God that when the Lord went to Calvary, he went with justice in mind. He had to repay the sin debt that you and I incurred. He had justice in mind. He put love on public display for you and for me. I'm so glad that Jesus and justice are indistinguishable. I'm so glad that the Lord sides on the side of the oppressed and those that suffer. Zacchaeus come down because I'm going to your house today. I don't care how low down you've been. I'm coming to your house. I don't care how far out you are. I'm going to your house. I don't care what folks say about you. I'm going to your house and I'm going today because I have not come for the folks who got it together. I have not come for the folks who think they've got the world in a jug and the stopper in their hand but I've come for all of those who are broke busted and disgusted I come for those who are messed up from head to toe and I don't know how you feel about it but even in this little robe I can admit that I'm a mess all on the inside but I'm so glad that when I was lost the Lord came and found me I'm so glad that when I was blind that the Lord opened my eyes to his good and his is there anybody here who can just lift up holy hands and give God glory that the Lord didn't leave you where he found you the Lord didn't turn his back on you because of what he knew about you but he said if you'll invite me in I'll come to your house today and make your life brand new and so I'm done But the Lord who came to save is a God who is concerned about justice. You can't be in right standing with God and be off step with God's children. I'm done. I'm done. But I, I, uh, <laughs> I had to go to. I had to go to, to the school for one of the kids. Y'all can probably guess which one. <laughs> and, uh, and there had been some, some conflict. And one of the kids' little friends just loves me, just loves me, and just loves me. But got into it with, with my baby. And mistreated my baby. And usually I let parents talk to their own children, but because I had a relationship with this child, I said, now you know I love you, but if you mistreat my child, me and you are going to have a problem. Because we can't be cool if you're mistreating my child. And brothers and sisters, God can't be cool with us if we mistreat his children. The Lord, who is the righteous judge, is a God of justice. And I'm not just talking about eschatological justice. I'm not talking about justice over in the great by and by. That, that's going to happen too. But I'm talking about justice right here now. This is the work to which our hands have been called. And this is the legacy that we carry on. Just because you don't see the chains doesn't mean the chains aren't there. I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. Doors of the church are open. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. I'm free. If you're here today, as we extend this invitation to you, maybe you're here and you're not in relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Maybe you're saying within yourself, Pastor, my life is so messed up. My situation is so bad. I have made such a mess of life that there's no way in the world that God would want to be in relationship with me. Can I tell you that that is a trick of the enemy? Zacchaeus' story shows us that there is nothing that we can do that is so bad that Jesus will not come and dine with us. That Jesus is not willing to come into our house and sup with us. If you're here today, you want to be saved, you want to be in relationship with the one who still makes house calls, you can be saved today. Maybe you're saying, I want to give my life to the Lord. I want to be baptized. If that's you, just come on today, on site or online. If that's you and you want a relationship with God, you want to be baptized, just type baptism in the chat. If you're in the sanctuary today, main floor, balcony, God bless you. We invite you to come. No more chains. My soul. Oh, bless your name. Praise the Lord. Maybe you're here today and you're saying, Pastor, I'm saved. I'm in relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But maybe you're here and you don't have a church home. You don't have a place a plug in a place to connect where you can grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ God does not want you to be spiritually homeless we would love to be your family I would love to be your pastor if you're here today just come on on site online if you're here just come on I am free we're singing it one more time for you I am free Praise the Lord. Are you here today? No longer bound. No more change. My soul. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. One more time, I am free. It's just a blessing. You may be seated.
Let all the people of God say amen. amen. Let me tell you, God is just an awesome God. God is such an awesome God. This is Sister Maxine Funches, and she was the caregiver for Brother Giles, whom we funeralized. And um, she said that she had been watching us for a year and a half. And she said to herself, that I've got to get to that church. And so she is coming to us today as a candidate for baptism. Somebody ought to be excited about that. And so we praise God for you. You have made the most important decision that you have ever made and that you will ever make. And we are so excited to welcome you to the family of God and to Fairfield Baptist Church. Come on, one more time, Fairfield. Can we celebrate? Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. We praise God today. God is still saving souls. And his name is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I am free. Praise the Lord. My soul. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Our Father and our God, we come around this table yes, Lord. for the second time this year, yes, Lord. grateful for your goodness and reminded yes, God. of our own frailty and yes. sinfulness before you. Yes, Jesus. Lord, we realize that we have done wrong in a myriad of ways, and yet this table reminds us that you have looked beyond our faults, and you've supplied all of our needs. We come to this table like Zacchaeus, O oh God realizing that we are unworthy but we are so grateful God that you have invited us to your table to dine and to sup with you we thank you for your body that has been broken for us for your blood that has been poured out as a ransom for many we're grateful God because we are reminded that without the shedding of blood there would be no remission of sin and so now Lord we pray that you would forgive us for our sin cast it as far as the east is from the west. Throw it into the sea of forgetfulness, never to remember it anymore. And Lord, if we have any ought against our brother or sister, our prayer is that you would give us the strength to take it to them. Because we know that if we do not forgive one another, that we cannot be forgiven of you. And so Lord, wash us anew. Purge us with hyssop. We'll be careful to give your name the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Has anyone been omitted in serving? Death could not hold you down. You are the risen king. Seated in majesty. We know who you are. On the night in which Jesus was to be betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and eat. This is my body which has been broken for you. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Let us eat and be thankful. In like manner, he took also the cup saying, this is the New Testament of my blood, which has been shed for the remission of sin. And I will not drink it again with you until I drink it anew in my Father's kingdom. Let us drink and be thankful. The Bible says that after they communed together, they went out into the Mount of Olives singing a hymn. Death could not hold you down. You are the risen king. Anybody know that death couldn't hold him and the grave couldn't keep him? You are the risen king. And we celebrate your sacrifice. We celebrate what you did for us on Calvary's mountain. You are who you said you are. You're worthy to be praised. We thank God for the visitation of his Holy Spirit today, for his presence and power and for the reminder, the reminder that Jesus and justice walk together. To all of our first time worshipers, we thank God for your presence today. We hope that you were blessed, that there was something that resonates with you, that will strengthen you for the journey that is ahead. Again, can you help me celebrate our 10 candidates who were baptized today? also shared in their first communion and to the one who responded to the clarion call today amen sister maxi we praise god for you come on can we praise god for her again amen 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 as always family i love you there's nothing you can do about it. Remember Bible study this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Bible study this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Looking forward as we pick up in Revelation 9. Revelation chapter 9. Amen. As we rest upon our feet as we are able. Continue to rest on your feet. <laughs> I come here to you to remind the congregation on the fourth Sunday and this month, we will celebrate Pastor Vicar's second anniversary. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah. We will have Brother Kevin Cosby as the speaker, and the other program you will, you'll see on the online. But I want to say to you, if you want to, I've been wrestling with this thing about trying to tell you all how to do it because there's certain things I can say and certain things I can't say. But a wise man told me to use the scripture. 
So I'm going to use a, a word or two of a scripture, and it says, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treaded the corn. I'm hoping and praying y'all read between the lines. Because a laborer is worthy of his reward. Now that's all I really can say, but help us celebrate our pastor for his second year and our, as our pastor give him peace. God bless you. Well, with that said, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Oh, bless him. Praise him, all creatures. Here below. Praise him above. Heavenly host, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And God said unto Moses, Tell Aaron and his priestly sons. That when they bless the people of God to give them this blessing, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. May the Lord God Almighty bless you in your downsetting and your uprising as you come and as you go in the city and in the field, in your joy and in your sorrow, in your labor and in your leisure. Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister until we meet at the feet of Jesus where there's neither sunrise nor sunset. To him be glory in the church now and forever. And all of God's people said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Have a great week.